Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements in my practice where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 Nine years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne and psoriasis and eczema and rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, regenerating, renewing system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. Let us help you change your life. Let us help you change the lives of loved ones, family members, workmates, friends. Today... Give us a call, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. We can help you wean yourself off your meds and get, a good, get on a good nutritional supplement program. There's always good nutritional strategies for whatever your health challenge is, especially long-term chronic degenerative health challenges. There's no drug strategies, folks. There's no medical strategies that can help you reverse a long-term chronic degenerative disease, but there's lots of nutritional strategies, and we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, recommended on the program, you can call the Brightside Bend phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. You can also head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com and purchase products or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website. And if you're interested in checking out our true skin health products, including our retinol 5% gel made with lots of vitamin C, made without preservatives, without fragrances, without fillers and waters and waxes and things your skin doesn't need. Only all my truth treatment products, all my truth formulations are made with only ingredients that your skin can use, only ingredients that are functional and active. And you can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we're talking vitamin E. And Alzheimer's disease and neuroprotection, Alzheimer's disease is the sixth leading cause of death in this country now, responsible for untold amount of misery. Nearly half of the adults over age 85 have Alzheimer's disease. Out of uh, nearly 6 million people with Alzheimer's disease, a lot of them don't even know they have Alzheimer's disease because there's no real way to detect it because... There's no such thing as Alzheimer's disease. It's a made-up disease. There's no real markers for Alzheimer's disease. After you die, they can look in your brain, and they can see messed-up brain cells. There's no real way to mark it, although recently there's been some folks thinking that by uh, checking your saliva, they could find stress hormones that may be related to dementia. But for the most part, there's no way to detect Alzheimer's disease because there's no such thing as Alzheimer's disease. What there is is rotting brain cells. This is so important, this distinction between cells and disease. And that's why vitamin E is so important. Vitamin E doesn't really do anything for disease, but it is a cell's best friend. The body's composed of cells and stuff. That's all we are, is cells and stuff. Cells and the stuff the cell, uh, cells and the stuff the cells make. That's what we are. We're cells and stuff that comes out of the cells, like a Play-Doh extruder machine. Just like when you were a kid, you put Play-Doh in the top, you press the crank, and out come different shapes. That's what a cell does. Yes, that's simplistic, but that's basically what it's about. A cell is a Play-Doh extruder machine. It's extruding proteins, mostly, but other things too. 
when we're sick, there's something wrong with how that cell is extruding. There's something wrong with the extrusions. This is so important. The health of our body, first and foremost, depends on the extruder machine, on the cells, not the stuff. Doctors work on the stuff that comes out of the cells. Doctors work on the, the secondary materials because they're not allowed in the cells. The cell is sacred space, folks. The cell is holy, sacred space, and we need to begin to think about it that way. A cell is ridiculously complicated, ridiculously vital and life-filled. Billions of reactions are happening every minute. How do billions of chemical reactions happen every minute? Millions every second. How can this possibly occur? Well, it does. Without our busy body interfering, all we got to do is eat and breathe and make sure we're not swimming in toxicity, all of which we're, we've screwed up. We don't eat right. We don't breathe right. And we bombard our bodies with toxicities. Of course, the extruder machine cells are going to be sick. And then the doctor will fix the, the stuff that comes out, or he'll, he'll kill the stuff that comes out, or he'll take something out of the body. Doctors, like everybody else, don't recognize this distinction between cells and stuff. That's why they're perfectly fine with treating disease by removing and manipulating stuff, taking out organs. Dermatology and plastic surgery are the worst, by the way. I've been working with dermatologists for years now. They'll actually inject stuff into the skin. If you're not making enough collagen, if you're, you're collagen-making cells, your you're, uh, fiber-making extruder machines are messed up and collagen doesn't come out or it comes out defectively, they'll actually inject it. We'll actually go for a procedure where they will, where they, they will inject stuff into our skin. On the other hand, while the doctor's not welcome into the cell, while the medical model is barred, rejected from this sacred domain of the biological cell that makes up our bodies, God's welcome through food, through nutrition, through oxygen. Not to mention through more abstract elements like our emotions and our, our thoughts, which get transferred into hormones. Hormones, by the way, act as little switches that turn on the extruder machine. Thoughts, emotions, feelings, food, nutrition, Detoxification, I, I don't really like that word detoxification, but avoiding toxicity, this is how the body's meant to be healthy. This is such good news. If you have a chronic degenerative disease, this should be the best news you've ever heard. It means that we can heal ourselves. This is so amazing. If you have diabetes, you can reverse it. If you have Alzheimer's disease, you can slow down its progression and reverse it. If you have cancer, do you know cancer can be reversed? Remissions occur. Yes. They've been occur we've known about cancer remissions for hundreds of years. Uh, certainly autoimmune disease. There's some 30, 40, maybe 50 million people that have autoimmune diseases, type 2, type uh, 1 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis. All of these things are reversible. All of these things, even if you don't reverse it, you can slow down its progression, but not with a drug, not with a doctor. This is a hypnotic trance we're under, that we think that a doctor can do anything for us. And I'm not ripping on doctors here. I'm ripping on the model. No one has cancer. We have cells that have switched into cancer growth. No one has heart disease, but lots of people have sick heart cells. No one has diabetes. We have sick pancreas cells, or we have sick cells everywhere that aren't responding to the garage door opening effects of insulin, of the hormone insulin. No one has respiratory disease. Do you know respiratory disease is like the third or fourth leading cause of death in this country? And no one has respiratory disease. People have sick respiratory cells. See the distinction we're making here? If you think you have this thing called respiratory disease, you're like, what the heck do I do? But if you realize that it's just lung cells that are messed up, and it's really in that way, no different than liver cells that are messed up when you have hepatitis or liver disease or skin cells that are messed up when you have psoriasis or skin disease or heart cells that are messed up when you have heart disease. It simplifies everything, and that really is what this is all about, simplification. Simplexity. I love that word, simplexity. I'll tell you what that is when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll be back after this. 
are back on the bright side. I'm Farm Suspend. Got lines open for you. 844 236 6010 is our number. 844 236 6010. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, skin health issues, skincare product questions, formulations, ingredients, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, I love hearing those. Or if you just have, just would like to contribute to our conversation, 844 236 6010 is our number. We're talking about Alzheimer's disease, vitamin E. Vitamin E is neuroprotective, one of the best vitamins for the brain cells. Maybe, I don't want to say the most important, but it's, on the, it's in the uh, top ten, that's for sure. If you're dealing with dementia issues, memory issues, cognitive impairment, or you have a loved one or friend or family member who's dealing with any kind of mental health issues, get them on vitamin E. Mixed tocopherols, mixed tocotrienols. There's eight different kinds of vitamin E, as we've said in the past. Alzheimer's disease is a big problem. Number of people with Alzheimer's disease may triple by 2050, according to the uh, journal Neurology, the medical journal of the American Academy of Neurology. This increase is due to an aging baby boom generation. No, it's not. This increase is due to us not taking care of ourselves, to eating the way we're eating. And by the way, don't buy into the silliness about the genetics of it. Oh, you have the gene. Oh, it's in your family. This, you know, there's a lot of misunderstanding in the world of health and nutrition, but really, there's nothing that's more misunderstood than genetics. If anybody ever tells you the gene for this or the gene for that, if you ever hear that phrase, gene for this, oh, it's the gene for Alzheimer's disease. Oh, you have the gene for breast cancer. They don't know what they're talking about. That's not how genes work. It's not like you have a gene for this and a gene for that. This is cartoon talk. This is baby talk. Gen Genetics is incredibly complicated, number one. Genes are networked. They're connected with each other. You can't just play around with genes. This is a problem with genetic modification, by the way, GMO. I genes are networked. They're connected. They're linked. They operate as a team. Like everything in the body operates as a team. The body is a whole. It's a, uh, there's no separation in the body, and you can't take out a gallbladder and not expect the rest of the body to be messed up. Likewise, you can't remove a gene and expect the whole genome not to be messed up. These genes are linked. Genes connect to, or genes are responsible for various proteins. Scientists say they're pleiotropic, which means that one gene can affect dozens of different chemical reactions. One gene can produce dozens of different proteins. And you don't have a gene for this or a gene for that. Simplistic baby talk. It's not how genes work. Genes are networked. And what's more, genes respond to the inside of a cell and especially to the outside, the membrane and the environment. Genes turn on and off. And there's a small amount of genes in the genome, which is all your genes. There's a small amount of genes that are hereditary for your eye color maybe and your hair. Even those can probably be changed. But about 5 or 10, maybe 10% 10 of the genes are, are permanent. But 90% of them are turning on and off responsive to the environment environment. So nobody has a gene for Alzheimer's disease, even though you'll hear people say this. There's a gene that's associated with Alzheimer's disease, but sometimes people get Alzheimer's disease. Sometimes they don't. And they have this gene. It's called the APO, uh, APOE4 gene. One in five people carry this APOE4 gene for Alzheimer's, but people get Alzheimer's with or without the gene. Genetics is involved, but the genetics is responsive to the environment. Sugar will change genetics. Lack of oxygen or oxygenation will change genetics. That's really what we're talking about here when we talk about the power of nutrition, the power of thought, the power of, uh, uh, of emotions and feeling, the power of oxygenation and respiration, the power of exercise, the power of rest. You don't need a doctor for any of this. Power of rest, no doctor required. Power of, of exercise, no doctor required. Power of nutrition, no doctor required. Power of oxygenation, no doctor required. Power of detoxification or eliminating toxicity, no doctor required. All of these steps that we can do ourselves, this is the bright side, this is the good news, all of these steps that we can do ourselves work by changing genetics. So don't let anybody tell you you have the gene for this and the gene for that and don't say it. It's not accurate. As far as Alzheimer's disease go, think dying, rotting brain cells, period. 
think cells that aren't doing their business, period. Think starving, suffocated brain cells, swimming in sugar, by the way, toxicity. This is, this, by, this is really a problem when it comes to Alzheimer's disease is insulin and sugar. And I am not going to rip on sugar any more than I have to because I'm a sugar addict as much as anybody. You know, if I haven't had, if I'm hypoglycemic, low blood sugar, I, I got the same kind of neurochemistry that we all have. We're neurochemically, neurologically hardwired to go for sugar, especially under conditions of stress, emotional stress, or physical stress, or nutritional deficiency. This is why people lose weight on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Under conditions of nutritional deficiency, you will crave sugar. Under conditions of protein deficiency, we'll crave sugar. Under conditions of micronutrient deficiency, B vitamin deficiency, we will crave sugar. So if you want to lose weight, and sugar is the number one reason why, we're, why we gain weight, you want to lose weight, get on a nutritional supplement program. You want to lose weight, get on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. You want to lose weight, eat more protein. You want to lose weight, make sure you're using... You're uh, focusing on digestive health using strategies for digestive health. Micro, uh, uh, probiotics support the microbiome, digestive enzymes, the Fucoid Z. And by the way, don't underestimate the importance of emotional stress and mental stress when it comes to weight loss. Yesterday, uh, last week, we read a study about stress and, and weight gain. This is one of the major reasons why we gain weight. Fi uh, emotional stress, mental stress, in addition to physiologic stress. The conventional wisdom about Alzheimer's disease is that it's a buildup in the brain of beta amyloid plaque, and now doctors have a new boogeyman. They call it tau protein. Others tell you it's fluoride and aluminum, and uh, the latest the latest boogeyman is chloride and uh, chlorine and fluoride. Of course, then you get a magic formula that helps you get rid of fluoride or a filter that gets rid of fluoride. I'm not saying fluoride's good, by the way. Fluoride definitely has effects on the brain. That's part of the whole toxicity profile. So it's the toxicity that we've, that we've inoculated or injected into our environment. I, absolutely, that's got an effect. But it doesn't do us any good to, to, to uh, moan about chemtrails and fluoride in the water and chlorine in the water and toxicity when we're intentionally toxing out our bodies. Alzheimer's disease involves fibers, true. But fibrosis is a classic way that uh, cells manifest their breakdown. And actually, it actually might be, and I'm not convinced, I I'm thinking here, fibrosis, which is the secretion of fibers, pulmonary fibrosis in the lungs, cystic fibrosis in the pancreas, fibrosis in the brain, fibrosis in breasts and ovaries and for women. I'm thinking that fibrosis may not necessarily be a dysfunction. It may be one of the ways the cell defends or protects against broken tissue, against destroyed tissue. Maybe the, the brain is rotting so much that cells secrete fibers as a way of patching up the rot. Sort of like caulking in a, in a broken down wall or a broken down building. In any case, yes, fibrosis is involved, but fibrosis follows toxicity. Fibrosis follows sickness. And don't underestimate the importance of estrogen. Estrogen is really interesting stuff, folks, and we don't really talk about it the way we should be talking about it. Estrogen is associated with inflammation and toxicity and protecting yourself from estrogen. Now, that's something that could be important, and vitamin E is estrogen. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Got a few lines open at 844-236-6010. We'll get to you here in, uh, in just a moment. Memory loss associated with Alzheimer's reversed. I love this one. You can reverse memory loss. This is a study done from UCLA. Uh, and you know how they did it? A 36-point therapeutic program involving diet. Hello, where'd you hear that before? Nutritional supplementation, exercise, optimization of sleep. I love that one. Do you know there's a very important connection between lack of sleep and a toxic buildup of chemicals in the brain for everybody, really, but especially for Alzheimer's from, uh, from the journal Nature Neuroscience. This is from June of last year. Sleep may be a missing piece in the Alzheimer's disease puzzle. Sleep, particularly a deficit of, the, of uh, deep restorative sleep, is a channel through which the proteins, the tangles, 
believed to trigger Alzheimer's disease, attacks the brain's memory. So again, you see, it's not the tangles, it's not the nerves, it's not the fibers, it's the stuff that precedes it. That's really the key. We don't see the preceding causes. All effects have causes, but sometimes those causes are invisible. In fact, they're always invisible. In the case of cancer, all cancer begins with one cell. All, really, all disease begins with one cell, then two cells, then three cells. But because there's so many cells and because they're so small, we don't notice it. But rest assured, behind every effect, every symptom, Every sign of a degenerative disease, whether it's pain or, or in the case of Alzheimer's, cognitive problems, there are invisible causes. That's the trick right there, folks. We've got to learn to see or to sense invisible causes. We've got to become attuned to the invisible world. That's why people are marginalized thoughts and emotions and feelings and spirituality. This is why we marginalize and we're so dismissive of these ideas. Your doctor probably thinks it's a joke. Oh, your thoughts affect your reality. Ha, 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 ha. Your, your feelings affect your reality. Ha, and they don't do it as much anymore because now it's been scientifically shown and there's actually scientific journals that talk about the link between emotions and the immune system, for example. But they used to, and, and a lot of them still do, because we don't notice the invisible world because we live in this materialistic world, which is a a vestige of the Enlightenment 600 years ago. That's when science really got going, about 600 years ago. And actually, it was a response to the, the real crazy spirituality of the Middle Ages, of the Dark Ages. In the Middle Ages and the Dark Ages, they knew about the invisible world, but they had kind of silly feelings about it. They didn't really know about it. They had they attributed disease to clouds in the air or to evil gods or to... I read this book once uh, in, in the Middle Ages. One of the causes of disease was the number nine. I don't know how that worked, but that's what it said in this book anyway. Or little elves that shot arrows at you. I'm not kidding you. This is what they really thought. Little elves that shot arrows at you. Science was a response to that kind of crazy de uh, uh, deification of the invisible, crazy honoring of the invisible. But today, we got to come full circle and we got to recognize that thoughts and feelings have invisible energy associated with them. Yes, every time you think a thought, there's energy that's emitted from your brain. You can, you can detect it with an EEG machine an electroencephalogram machine. You can actually detect your thoughts. There's thoughts that come off, of, there's energy that comes off of our head after we think, or as we're thinking thoughts, and that same energy affects our body. It affects the shape of our bodies. It affects the shape of our cells. Now that's really where you can have an effect on disease. But to depend on just what we could see with our own eyes, this materialistic way that, that medicine works on the body, it doesn't serve us, and the evidence is in the utter failure of the medical model when it comes to uh, addressing degenerative health challenges. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health, nutrition, or prescription drugs, or skin health issues, or formulations, or ingredients, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to uh, contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. Stephen in PA, what's going on? Good morning, buddy. Good morning, Ben. Ben, uh, I have uh, oh, basically on those uh, little elves that shoot the, uh, right. uh, shoot the arrows. I heard on uh, uh, there was witnesses back when the Black Plague was going through Europe that uh, the you know the Grim Reaper with the uh, sickle. Yeah, that they it was, saw him. Uh, you know, people uh, spraying uh, sprayers uh, with like uh, spraying uh, you know agricultural sprayers, spraying mist. To get rid of the Grim Reaper or no, something? No, no, no. To, uh, I guess maybe, who knows, start it or whatever. I don't know. Okay. This but is what anyway. they believed. That they didn't know about germs. Germs were invisible. They had no idea. They didn't even know what rotting was. They would dump their, their excrement in their front lawns because they didn't understand that there were these invisible components to the disease process. So, yeah, it was, we're, we're, not, we're not much better today is all Well, that's I'm what I, uh, I'm calling to, to discuss the, uh, uh, the, uh, the silent signaling uh, proteins. I had uh, listened to another show where uh, about old, uh, regarding old age and aging. Uh, I believe they call it sen sentience. Sentience, uh, yes. Senescence. When, uh, senescence. 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 And the, uh, uh, the CERT, uh, CERT uh, signaling uh, proteins, there's a CERT. 
one. Those are genetics. Seven. Those are genes. The CERT gene, yes. And uh, what they're finding out now is this uh, one uh, 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 nutrient called NAD plus. Okay. Uh, uh, which is also called... It's involved uh, in energy production. It's part of B vitamins. It's part of niacin, nicotinamide, yeah. adenosine, something or another. It's a yeah, niacin it's a, derivative. Nicotinamide uh, riboside. Okay. And that is, uh, it's a form of vitamin B3. But what, are they, but what are they getting at here? What's the major point what here, Steve? What they're saying is that these, uh, <clears throat> these uh, CERT genes, uh, let me see, three of them, uh, there, there's seven of them, three, four, and five uh, enhance the mitochondria. Well, you see, but cellular. here's the thing, Stephen. You're getting way too in-depth. I mean, it's fun, and it's interesting, but for somebody who has Alzheimer's disease, they don't need to know about okay. CERT genes and NAD, and although niacin can be very helpful for the brain, by the way, very important yeah, brain. I don't know if niacin even has this uh, nicotinamide riboside. Nicotinamide is niacin. Nicotinamide is a derivative of niacin. Okay, it's Vitamin a form B3. of uh, B3, but the, yes. this particular stuff, it, uh, it, it halts the uh, aging. It, it, uh, it stops, I guess, the, the environment of the cell. It, becomes, it starts putting out these toxins. Well, what is the toxins. stuff, though? What is the stuff, Steve? Is it the NAD you're talking about? Yeah. The, yeah, it's a nicotinamide, a riboside is the exact uh, okay. name of the uh, supplement. All right, and, well, here's the deal. You don't need nicotine. They're trying to sell that maybe, but here's what you want to do. Get yourself some niacin because that really is important. By the time you get to these fine derivatives, these, these refined derivatives of the niacin, the body has many mechanisms for controlling that, which you want to give your body the precursors so then let the body make the NAD. And the major precursors are the B vitamins. That's why I call them the brain vitamins. The B vitamins are the brain vitamins, particularly niacin, by the way. You know, if you have Asperger's syndrome or social anxiety syndrome or any anxiety issues, high doses of nicotinamide, high doses of niacin have been shown to help calm the brain down. Uh, niacin is involved in the production of serotonin, an important brain chemical, tryptophan. Uh, there's a relationship between niacin and tryptophan, which is an important brain amino acid. So point well taken, Stephen. Niacin is very important for the brain, as is all, as are all the B vitamins. I'm going to let you and, go, buddy, unless you have... One, one question before you yes, go. Sir. But the, uh, niacin is, is a niacinamide. It's not nicotinamide. Uh, they're but very, very similar, extremely similar to each other. Nicotinic acid, niacinamide, niacin, they're pretty darn close. For all intents and purposes, they're vitamin B3. Stephen, have a beautiful, blessed day. Thank you for bringing Thank that you, up, my friend. Bye. Take care. Okay, hang tight if you're on hold. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Let's go to Virginia in Ohio. What's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning, Virginia. Hello. Hello, hello. What's um, cooking? Yeah, I've been on Longevity products for a couple years now, okay. and I'm having some skin issues. Okay, tell me about them, Virginia. Okay. Um, probably for 30 years or so, my palms of my hands are dry and they're cracked. Got it. And itchy. Just your and, palms? Anywhere else uh, in the body? No, no. The last um, probably three years, uh, I've had where my buttocks rub together. Okay. There is dry. Got it. it it's all dry Here's there. The deal. And let me let, let's explain. Let me explain to you how that works. Okay. Okay. When you look at your skin, it just looks like one thing. But you got to zoom in with your X-ray vision, your imaginary X-ray vision, and see layers. What you're explaining there, the way you're describing your condition, is the top layers of that skin. Hey, can uh, Keith, will you turn that turn that down, Keith? Please. Please. Having a, uh, an echo. Can you hear an echo there, Virginia? No. No. Okay. Oh, I just have to deal. Uh, oh, maybe you have your radio on. No. Your radio on. No? No. All right. I'll have to deal with it then. All right. So it's, if you want to look at your skin, you'll see uh, you have to picture in your imagination layers. What you're explaining is the top layer is not growing correctly, period. Right. This has to do with fats and fatty vitamins. Any condition on the surface of the skin, the way you're explaining, where, where it doesn't develop appropriately, that's called eczema, by the way, but it can also it can also be something like dry, flaky skin, you want to consider fats and fatty vitamins. And that, and that means, means digestion, digestion or, absorption or absorption of fats and fatty vitamins and intake of them. So number one, all right, Virginia, you there? Do we have Virginia? Yes. Okay. Number one, uh, vitamin A, 20,000 international units a day. Number two, 
vitamin D, five, I, I can't, I, I'm just going to deal with it here for a second, Keith, don't worry about it. Uh, 5,000 international units a day of vitamin D, 400 international units a day of vitamin E. Make sure you're taking your ultimate EFAs with all of that. All the, the A and the D and the E, you're going to have to take extra, but your ultimate EFAs, I'd be doing nine of them a day. Now, if you're not absorbing, and very commonly as we get older, especially women get older, malabsorption of fats occurs. So you may take your fats, but not benefit from them. So using supplements that can help you process and absorb and assimilate those fats is also important. Making sure you're using all your fatty vitamins and essential fatty acids with food, especially fatty food, and it wouldn't hurt you to throw in the ultimate enzymes with your fatty food and with your uh, vitamin E, A, and D, and ultimate EFAs. And then if you want, you can get yourself some extra bile salts, B-I-L-E, bile salts, and make sure you do the whole thing with apple cider vinegar to activate the enzymes and get yourself some, some uh, help support stomach acidity. And then last but most certainly not least, uh, probiotics, good bacteria, play a major role in the absorption and digestion of fats. Now, if you have any digestive issues that are triggered by foods, you're going to want to eliminate those foods because food allergies can also cause disruptions in how that upper layer of your skin grows. But mostly you want to consider that you're not making or you're not processing fats correctly, either through a lack of intake of fatty vitamins and EFAs or a lack of absorption, and it has to do with the fatty layer on the very, very surface of the skin. The reason you're noticing it on your butt cheeks and the reason you're noticing it on your hands is because those areas are rubbing against each other and in the case of, the, of your hands, uh, you're, at, you're, you're using the palms of your hands a lot, so that area breaks down faster than other parts of the, uh, other parts of the body, the skin on other parts of the body. I got a bunch of calls here I want to get to. I hope I helped you out. Uh, one last thing, if you uh, use my Omega-6 healing cream, Truth Omega-6 healing cream on the area, that'll accelerate the healing. Thanks for your call, Virginia. I'm going to let you go, okay? Thank have you. A beautiful, have a beautiful day. All right, let's go to uh, Carol in Baltimore. What's up? Welcome to the Bright Side, Carol. Hey, hi. Thanks. Hey, hey, what's going on? Uh, well, I've got a question about my sister, and then I've got a question about me. Sure. Um, my sister uh, loves doctors. Loves, okay. loves, loves doctors. Okay, okay. That's all right. And doctors so need love, too. Gotten... We beat up on doctors a lot. They need some loving, too. We all need love. Including okay. Doctors. Okay. But, all right, so, yes, uh, go ahead. So far, they've got her uterus, and they just got her gallbladder. And I'm afraid the next thing will be her thyroid. Um, she had terrible, terrible gallstones, so she had emergency gallbladder surgery. So they've got that now. But for years, she's been on estrogen replacement, and then she went on thyroid. And they had her taking calciferol, which I just got her off of. But I'm wondering if any of those things caused the gallstones. Hello? Hello? man out, I can stop doing all these stupid regulations and nothing but nonsense that jacks up the price. That's going on across the country. And what there's another little pearl that people don't know about called medical cost sharing. 
it's, in, it's written into the Affordable Care Act, but nobody ever talks about it. What it is is a consortium of self-pay patients who join together, cover their own health care expenses, and they're parallel to the system. They're able to access the real cost of health care, which are about a third of what people are paying now. And I joined, and I put my office staff on it because I personally cannot deal with the insurance industry. So I'm having the most expensive policy, which is $199 a month. I pay a total of $500 out of pocket per year, and I'm covered up to a million dollars per occurrence per year, and I can go to any doctor, any hospital that I want. And I also get benefits for holistic care as well. So if I want to do Qigong or Reiki or whatever I choose to do, it's covered. That's the alternative that exists now. Patients need to know that it exists so they can make an informed choice, and that's what the book teaches people. Now, now, tell me about this insurance program again, or tell the listeners like how they. Because I'm sure a lot of people are going to be interested sure. in this. It's called Liberty um, Liberty Healthshare, and okay. if people go to libertyoncall.org, they can learn all about it. It's not new; it's been around for about 18 years. But it was a small organization, but it, it, it morphed into a more inclusive. Anybody who's liberty minded, anybody who wants to take responsibility for their own health, and will voluntarily cover somebody else's their, their members' healthcare needs. And this so is all on your website. This it's is, all this on the website, and so is the link. But it's. Uh, it's the future, and it's actually your choice that you don't have to do the Affordable Care Act if you don't want to. You don't have to go to Aetna or Cigna or any of these other insurance companies because, trust me, they're becoming too big to fail. And the more power they get, the more they charge you, the less they pay the physician, the worse the care is going to be. Wow. Dr. George, you are doing some super, super work. I can't tell you how grateful I am as a fellow healthcare professional for what you're doing. Just awesome stuff. The book Thank is Big Medicine, Dr. Elena George. And then uh, it's Dr. Dr. Elena George.com. Dr. Elena George.com. Check out our blog and uh, check out our website. And also Liberty Health. That's really cool information. LibertyOnCall.org. And then also the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons, AAPSOnline.org. Thank you so much, Dr. George. Have a, Thank have you for a great day. Good to talk to you. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, that's uh, libertyonline.org. I highly suggest you check them out if you don't want to be dealing with Obamacare. And then also aapsonline.org, and that's the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons. Check out Dr. George's website. All this information is up there, plus her blog, drlanageorge.com. All right, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a spectacular, awesome, awesome day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.